In terms of the research project that we worked on, um, one of the things that we wanted to look at was um, leadership in the context of peer review. And an area that we identified in the literature that wasn't particularly well uh, scoped, it had been explored mainly in the business sector, was the contribution of um, social interpersonal skills, communication skills generally, um, to leadership and specifically um, for peer review. And I have to say that going into it, when we were thinking about communication, um, the thing that came to mind was probably to do with this idea of, you know, you know, receiving and interpreting and particularly um, spoken information. However, when we started to look at what academics were telling us about communication, it really didn't kind of um, meet those expectations or, or fall into that area. So the things that academics told us about communication were that communication takes, um, can occur in different places. So places were certainly a theme around communication, for example. Lots of communication around um, uh, peer review or getting, you know, in terms of feedback on learning and teaching occurred in um, tea rooms in a very informal sense or occurred on corridors and uh, you know other liminal spaces like for example lifts and stairwells. Um, so something that said to us that particularly in the context of peer review or learning about teaching, um, places, informal spaces as well as formal spaces like a classroom, a lecture theatre, um, you know a laboratory, they were just as important. The context for what was occurring really facilitated um, communication. So that was one key thing that we learned. Something else that we learned were that um, uh, there is a, a strong affective component to communicating um, and that really academics express that need to feel um, uh, comfortable and that um, there wasn't any sense, they used words like fear, that they didn't want to feel afraid or frightened. They, they wanted an experience where um, they felt that they were um, on an equal footing with whoever was involved in the communication, um, that they could speak, you know, respectfully. Um, and once they felt comfortable, that was the kind of language they used, um, as opposed to, you know, frightened or scared, then there was more chance for um, communication to be uh, effective and receptive, I suppose, at the same time. Um, and then beyond um, the effective, there was also this idea of collaboration, that communication in the context of peer review required some reciprocity, that you needed the sense of, of working together and that um, there was a move towards developing understanding as opposed to judgment and they were the qualities that were embedded within, um, you could describe it as a collaborative uh, culture. So another thing that the academics identified as important for communication was this idea of um, collegiality. And by this, um, what they were looking for was a, a relationship where there was a sense that they were equal, that there was some reciprocity there, um, and where both parties were looking to understand what was going on, as opposed to um, their forming particular judgments about somebody else what was doing in relation to their um, teaching. Um, they also felt, in terms of collegiality, that trust was required. Um, and this trust emanated from a sense of understanding and also the idea that um, they had respect for this person's work and, and what, what they were doing. Um, and, and that was seen to be important for them. Um, additionally, with regard to communicating with each other, attitude was seen to be very relevant in that um, 
those involved in peer review needed to come to the relationship um, with the expressed view that they could actually um, benefit and gain something from the, um, the relationship. So for communication to be successful, you needed to approach the situation you know, with an open mind, um, but not with the sense that um, you just expected people to say you know, pleasant things about your teaching, but you were open to other people providing constructive advice and support. So really just to bring this together, the key things um, in this landscape of communication were that um, there was a co the, the relationship was collegial, that um, different places um, supported different types of communication, that um, the effective experience was to be taken into consideration and that people needed to feel comfortable and that they didn't want um, a situation to occur where they were either scared or frightened because that was considered to be very unhelpful. Um, and then Finally, of course, people needed to approach the situation with a, an attitude that was open, where they would be prepared to consider new ideas, new ways, ways of thinking, but not just in a sort of a, a way where it was just um, accepting, but where there was an opportunity to take a, a critical, um, constructive stance as well.